Hello again and welcome at our GCP Mindset channel. Today we have a very interesting topic. We don't speak about clinical research, we speak about clinical evaluations of medical devices. And I have our expert, Jiri Paseka, with me here. And uh, Jiri, you know already from a uh, other video, he is a medical doctor and as I said already an expert for clinical evaluation and due to the delay of the MDR it's interesting because we will figure out and discuss what to do in the meanwhile until the MDR will be effective next year, I think in May 2021. Hello everybody, thank you Andreas for inviting me, it's my pleasure to be here. Hello Jiri, thank you very much for being here to discuss with thank me you. the clinical evaluation process of medical devices. It's a very interesting topic because the MDR is delayed, but in the meanwhile we need to do something. Is it in the meanwhile less demanding to do the uh, clinical evaluation for medical devices? Actually it isn't Andreas. Uh, of course the clinical evaluation process described in so-called old directive is less demanding than uh, the same one required uh, by the MDR. But in the meantime, in uh, June uh, 2016, there was a guideline called MEDDEF 2.7-1 revision 4 published. And uh, the requirements in this uh, guideline are quite similar to those that are described in uh, MDR. Actually, saying it simply, any clinical evaluation that should survive uh, under the MDR should now follow all the principles of the MEDDEF that I mentioned. Okay, but what exactly are the differences? Uh, there are a couple of very important differences. We can talk for hours about them, but let's try to point out some important ones. For example, there is fixed a frequency of clinical evaluation report updates. For new medical devices or high-risk medical devices, you have to update your report annually. For less risk devices and well-known ones, there is a frequency between two to five years. What is important is that you have to justify and document the planned frequency in your clinical evaluation plan. And please don't forget that you have to update your clinical evaluation also whenever any new information which affects the evaluation or its conclusion appear. Okay. Is there any difference between the process um, when you have a low risk device which you want to keep on the market compared to a low risk device you want to get on the market? Basically for devices that you would like to put on the market you have to work with your preclinical data, the data available for equivalent devices etc. For those that you would like to keep on the market you mostly work with the data from post-market surveillance and, from, and with the literature data. Okay, it sounds quite demanding and complicated. As far as I know, you write the clinical evaluation results in a report. Who's writing the report? This is also one of the new and quite strict requirements. The authors of the clinical evaluation have to have a, a higher education degree and a, at least five years of relevant professional experience. And if they don't have a higher education degree, they have to have at least 10 years of relevant professional experience. Moreover, uh, the expertise has to cover three areas. Uh, first, the relevant clinical specialty. Second, the medical writing and uh, research methodology. And third, the information management, because the, uh, the identification of all available resources of relevant clinical data is one of the important part of uh, one of the important part of clinical evaluation. And of course, all of them uh, have to be familiar with the medical device uh, topic uh, generally and uh, with the technology of the device concerned itself. 
Okay, but it's not easy to find these people who can write the report. I mean, uh, we have about 450,000 medical devices only in Europe and every device needs to be evaluated and you need so many people, but as I said already, I think it's quite hard to find these people. You are completely right and in fact you can hardly find a single person which, uh, which uh, has all these uh, requirements. We mostly work in a team of orders and this team uh, consists of one librarian, uh, one medical writer, uh, also skilled in medical device uh, topics and uh, familiar with the device itself and one uh, clinician uh, who is mostly recruited out of our advisory board. Okay, and which of these persons need to match them with the requirements of having five to ten years of experience? The person who is mainly responsible and who signs off the report, correct? Of course, it depends uh, how you read the MedDef, but in fact, all of them should more or less meet these requirements. Kiri, could you please describe briefly the process of clinical evaluation for us? Yes, I'll be happy. Uh, there are basically five stages. Stage zero, as it is called, means to set up the scope and plan of clinical evaluation. And both of them have to be linked to the safety, performance and risk-benefit endpoints. Then in stage one, uh, you have to identify all pertinent data. In stage two, to appraise them in terms of scientific validity and methodology. And then in stage three, you analyze all relevant data. And finally, based on all these activities, you have to compile the clinical evaluation report. I guess that the relevant data of a clinical evaluation are coming from a clinical investigation, right? Actually, not only or not always. The clinical evaluation has to analyze data from various sources like uh, medical journals, uh, white papers, clinical performance data, and of course also clinical investigation outcomes if uh, available. Uh, what's important is that you have to show that you find and analyze all relevant data and of course that you considered both favorable and unfavorable data if such exist concerning the safety and performance of your device. Okay, that means actually that you end up with a lot of data from extremely different data sources. Some have been collected with um, data from literature, other from investigation. There are huge differences in methods and also with a scientific approach. How do we deal with these differences? Once we have all data collected, we have to appraise them in terms of uh, scientific validity, methodology, and the weight of each data set and further to analyze only relevant data which were collected with sound methodology and have enough scientific validity. Among frequent mistakes uh, we can see the improper interpretation of uh, statistical significance, uh, lack of or inadequate uh, controls, improper reporting, uh, serious adverse events and last but not least uh, referring to clinical investigations that uh, were not done in compliance with ISO 14155. Uh, okay, that means also that a manufacturer might provide you with data and you need to say sorry the quality is not sufficient? True, yes it's exactly what the MedDef requires to sort out the wrong or scientifically not valid data. And the worst case is probably that you even say we need to collect new data for the clinical evaluation. It depends what you call uh, the worst <laughs> because uh, the collecting the missing uh, or requested data 
is a key success factor for any uh, medical device manufacturer that would like to compile uh, the relevant uh, clinical evaluation which will be assessed by notified bodies uh, and uh, will be accepted by notified bodies. And in such case, the collecting the proper data is the only way how to succeed. Okay, but collecting data means always more costs. It depends. Uh, basically, you are right. On the other side, uh, in medical device studies, uh, we can work a little bit with sample sizes. Uh, we may use uh, uh, methods of remote monitoring, of statistical monitoring, uh, which can reduce the costs of clinical investigations if these investigations are needed for collecting the proper data. Thierry, according to my experience, most manufacturers want to avoid clinical investigations to collect further clinical data. Um, but as we have heard today, nobody can avoid the clinical evaluation according to the new MDR. So even so, in between MEDEF and MDR, we need to find a way to comply with both. Um, what would be your recommendations to avoid any problems, to make it as cost effective as possible, as fast as possible and as successful as possible? Okay, should you be a manufacturer of medical devices, I would recommend you to assess your personal capacity and also the expertise of your team in connection with a number of your medical devices. Uh, if you find your capacity inadequate, uh, you should either hire the team or look for a subcontractor. Then you should perform the gap analysis of existing clinical data and based on it you can prepare the relevant and also cost-effective clinical evaluation plans which will eventually include also clinical investigation. What is extremely important is to start collect any missing data as soon as possible. And if you don't have enough expertise and capacity, as we mentioned, companies like ours are ready to help you. Yuri, great. Thank you very much for the interesting interview. I think the most important messages for the manufacturers is don't wait until May 2021. Start as soon as possible. May is too late. And the second is there are experts in the market who can help, also smaller companies. Um, and there are many ways to do it as cost effective as possible and as fast as possible. They are not alone. You are true, Andreas. It's exactly as you said. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I hope you liked our video. You found the interview interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel and see you the next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks.